Mr. Robert Pepin is hospitalized for bowel resection surgery. The urinary catheter was removed this morning, but Mr. Pepin is unable to urinate and complains of a strong urge to urinate and abdominal pain in the subpubic region. You run a bladder scan which confirms 950 milliliters of urine in the bladder. You notify Mr. Pepin's physician, who prescribes an immediate indwelling urinary catheter. Hi, Mr. Pepe. Hello. I talked to your doctor, and we're going to reinsert your urinary catheter. This will allow your bladder to empty, and you'll feel better after. Okay. When inserting an indwelling urinary catheter, the nurse must first determine the size of catheter to use according to the user's age and gender, or as medically prescribed. For Mr. Pepe, a 14 to 18 FR catheter is required. Given the fact that fitting a urinary catheter requires access to the user's genitals, the nurse must ensure privacy during the procedure by closing the curtain or the door. The nurse attaches the drainage bag to the bed frame and puts the tubing on the bed leaving the protective cap in place for sterility purposes. This procedure allows to quickly connect the urinary catheter to the drainage bag and prevents the bag from falling to the floor. To be able to safely discard soiled items and prevent contamination of other material, he tapes a waste bag to the end of the table between it and the user. Well, to fit a male user with an indwelling urinary catheter, he must be in recumbent dorsal position with his legs slightly parted to give easy access to his genitals. Hi. All right. Could you lay back and open your legs slightly so that it can prepare the insertion material? I need to uncover your genitals. To keep everything sterile, I must ask you to keep from touching the items on the bed. That's fine. Thanks. To prevent soiling the bed linen, the nurse places a disposable pad under the user's buttocks. For modesty purposes, only the user's genitals should be uncovered. The nurse opens the outer packaging of the catheter and attaches it to the table with adhesive tape to be able to easily pick it up at the proper time while preparing the sterile material. The insertion material tray must be opened in a sterile manner. Establishments may have different ways to assemble the insertion tray, so the nurse needs to adapt her procedure based on the asepsis principles. The nurse positions the material in sterile manner. He opens the first package on the tray and, using clamps, removes the gloves and puts them on the table. He takes the first sterile field by a corner avoiding contamination, and places it on the bed between the user's thighs and slides the upper edge under the user's buttocks. Sterile gloves are essential when handling sterile material to prevent the transmission of pathogens to the user's bladder. When preparing the material, the nurse takes care not to contaminate the material. He takes a perforated field and places it on the sterile field. Then, he opens the package containing the antiseptic wipes and puts them back on the sterile tray.
He opens the lubricant package and empties the contents on the sterile field or sterile tray. He takes the sterile water syringe, removes the cap and places it on the sterile field. The nurse removes the catheter from its inner packaging, being careful not to contaminate it. If contamination should occur, the catheter must be disposed of and replaced with a new one. The catheter's balloon must be checked for damage. To this end, the nurse takes a syringe and injects water into the balloon line. He then inflates and deflates the balloon. If it is defective, he must dispose of the catheter and restart the procedure. He then places the syringe in the sterile container. The catheter must be lubricated before it can be inserted. For men, it is lubricated to a length of about 15 to 20 centimeters. Once lubricated, the catheter is placed in the sterile container and the preparation method can continue. He then places the sterile container and its contents on the sterile field between the user's thighs, which brings the material closer to the procedure area for easier access. All right. All right. I am now going to disinfect your penis before I start inserting the catheter. Sure. Prior to inserting the catheter, disinfecting the site is essential to prevent microorganisms from entering the bladder and perineal region. To this end, the nurse holds the user's penis in his non-dominant hand just below the head and pulls back the foreskin if the user is not circumcised. This provides a good view of the urinary meatus. That hand shall then be considered contaminated and may not be used to handle sterile items during the insertion procedure. He applies light pressure to the end of the penis with his thumb and index to open the urinary meatus, which he maintains throughout the procedure. With his dominant hand, he takes the first antiseptic coated stick and disinfects the urinary meatus. He then applies circular movements from the meatus to the base of the head of the penis with the remaining wipes. After each step, he drops the wipe into the waste bag and takes a new one. In doing so, his dominant hand remains sterile. With his dominant hand, the nurse takes the catheter about 7.5 to 10 centimeters from the end and places the end in the sterile container to prevent contamination. With his non-dominant hand, he takes the user's penis and places it perpendicular to the body. This straightens the urethral canal and eases the insertion process. In men, slight resistance of the prostate sphincter is normal when inserting the catheter. That is why the nurse must ask the user to push as if trying to urinate. Push as if you were trying to urinate. Sure. You will feel a slight pressure, it's normal. Okay. He slowly inserts the catheter into the urinary meatus until he feels a slight resistance. Then, he firmly holds the catheter against the sphincter without applying force to allow it to relax and delicately pushes the catheter farther in. He lowers the penis to about a 60 degree angle and continues to insert the catheter up to 15 to 20 centimeters or until urine appears at the end of the catheter. He pushes the catheter a further two to four centimeters to make sure the balloon is all the way inside the bladder. The nurse releases the penis, still holding the catheter in place because contraction of the bladder could accidentally eject the catheter. He inflates the balloon with the sterile water syringe and makes sure the catheter is securely in place. Before connecting the drainage bag, he lets the bladder empty completely. 
The nurse replaces the foreskin and attaches the catheter to the tubing of the drainage system. Replacing the foreskin is important to mitigate the risk of paraphimosis if it remains stuck behind the head of the penis and does not return to its normal position. The nurse secures the catheter to the upper part of the thigh using a fixing device through the orifice of the balloon. He also makes sure there is no traction on the ureter to prevent the risk of tissue damage to the penis. The nurse makes sure there are no leaks which could indicate that the user is having bladder spasms or that the catheter is too small. You're going to feel the need to urinate or like the catheter is pulling out. This is normal. Those feelings should disappear within the next half hour. Okay, that's what happened the last time. It's not your first catheter, huh? No. So everything looks fine? Okay. Let's clean up. So are you nice and comfy? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. If you feel any discomfort, use your call button. I'll be back to check on you later. Okay, thank you very much. See you later.